Hello, my name is Jason Fine. I'm a senior solution architect at AppSolver. Today I'll be demonstrating how we can use AppSolver to bring in nested data that contains arrays, flatten that out and send it to Athena so that our data scientists will be able to look at it and derive business insights that they'll be able to share with the team. Um, today we'll be using um, store purchase orders um, as the data source and we'll send that out to Athena after flattening it. So to get started, I'm going to switch over to AppSolver and I'm going to create a new data source. A data source in AppSolver is a configuration that tells us where we should bring data in from. So we can bring data in from files, we can bring data in from uh, Kinesis streams, uh, Kafka streams, event hub streams, pretty much any, any streaming solution you'll be using. And then we can also bring data in from databases if you have it sitting in a more typical relational database. In our case, the data is sitting on S3. So I'll pick S3 as the data source. And then AppSolver prompts me to tell us where the data is sitting. Uh, in this bucket, we have the data under this folder. So I'll tell that to AppSolver. And then we'll see on the right-hand side, we have a list of files that have been detected. Uh, and then we can name this or data JSON and once I click continue AppSolver is going to do a lot of things behind the scenes it's going to automatically detect what format this data is so it detected that it's JSON data it also will detect compression so if there's if the data is compressed compressed with gzip or snappy or any other sort of compression will auto detect that you can of course provide these things automatically but we we'll try and keep it simple so you don't need to configure things that we can auto detect um, once it does that, we'll, it will show you a preview of the data so you can confirm that everything looks as you expect. So in this case, we're looking at store order data, like I mentioned, um, and this store order da data contains information about orders that were placed and the store that they were placed at. Um, once I click create, we'll get a new data source. In this case, I'll skip that because I already have an existing one that's been uh, running for a while. So if we look at that data source, um, it's going to look something like this. On the left-hand side, we have the fields that AppSolver was able to detect within the data. And this is a scheme on read, meaning whenever we detect new fields, we'll add them to this list. So you never have to manage the fields explicitly. In addition to that, for each field, we'll also collect uh, statistics. So for example, we can have a look at the city uh, the, the city that the customer comes from and we can see uh, that we have 800 distinct values for the city um, and then the density within the data 100% of my events contain the city so we're good on that on that front we can also see issues with uh, it can also help us find issues so for example if we look at this order type we can see that we have data coming in um, that contains either a pickup or shipping order but we'll notice that the pickup and and shipping are sometimes sent in lowercase and sometimes sent in uppercase so maybe that's something that we want to clean up when we send the data to Athena um, in our case what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking uh, information about the store that the data came from uh, the store that the order was placed at so that can be uh, the store name and the store country and then um, we also have this array of items um, that contains uh, which items were, were ordered within this purchase order. So we have the name of the item, we have the, the unit price for the sale, and we have how many items were ordered. We're going to be taking this data and we're going to be flattening it. So at the moment we have a nested object with an array that contains multiple elements per purchase order. When we send this data to Athena, we're going to need to flatten it so that it can be presented in a table. So to do that, we'll go and create a new output. And when we do that, we'll be prompted to select the destination that we want to send the data to. We can send it to many different locations. So that can be a, a typical database or data warehouse, such as Redshift and Snowflake. It can also be back to files on S3 or Google or Azure. Um, but in our case, we want to send it to Athena. So we'll pick that. Um, and we'll call this order stats and we'll select next 
And regardless of what screen I would have selected, what output I would have selected on the previous screen, um, this step would look the same. So the way you define the output is identical across destinations. Uh, AppSolver will take care of managing, sending the data to the appropriate destination for you. You just need to define what you want AppSolver to send and we'll take care of the rest. So in this case, we can see that on the left hand side, I have the fields that were available in my data source. Um, and then on the right hand side, I have the columns that will be added to the table that are created in Athena. In this case, I have, and if I click on the preview, we can see these two columns. In this case, I have this time column by default that don't want that field, so I'll remove it. And as, as I was saying, we want to have uh, order information um, per store. Um, so that our team can maybe infer information about which store is performing the best, what items perform the best, uh, maybe based on country. So let's start adding the fields that we'll need. So let's add uh, the order ID, and then let's add um, the store country, um, the store name, um, and we'll rename these quickly. So we have the order ID, and then we'll rename this to store country. store name and uh, the next thing we would want to add is the item information so what item was sold and you'll notice that this is an array so when we add this first field so I'll add the item name it's going to prompt us to choose what we want to do because this is an array and we're sending it to a flat output we would have to either um, concatenate the values or choose a single one of them or the last option is what we're going to do is we'll, be, we'll flatten the data based on this array. So for every element in this array, we'll create a new row in the table. So if I click Add, um, and then continue to add the other fields, so maybe the category, and I'll add the quantity and price in a moment as a calculation, and click Preview now, then we'll see that for every order ID, so for example, this is the same order ID, we're getting multiple rows. So the first row is for the first item sold, the second row is for the second item sold, and the third for the third item sold. And that's essentially what it means by flattening. So we're going to take the, the data that belongs, that is common across all items in the array, and we're going to duplicate it across multiple rows so that you have uh, a, date, a row per item. So at the moment we've done something very simple. We've taken a few of the columns that we want and I'll just quickly rename these. So I'll rename this to item name and item category. So we've just taken a few few items from the data source and we've mapped them to our output table. Um, we might want to do calculations as well. So for example, in this case, I might want to take the, the quantity and the unit price and multiply those together, together to get the final sale price for this uh, line item. So to do that, I'm going to click the Add Calculated Field button. And then we get prompted with this list of functions that, we, that are built in within AppSolver. We have over 200 built-in functions, uh, including some higher level functions such as GeoIP parsing and user agent parsing. But for our case, we're, we're satisfied with the lower level functions such as multiply addition that you can use to build out your business logic. We just need to multiply two values together, so we'll choose that. And then we'll choose uh, the quantity as the first uh, first operand, and then the unit class as the second. And then we'll name this final class. And we'll notice that we're placing the result within the data.items array. So placing the result back within the data.items array allows us to keep the context of the calculation in the correct location. And that way, AppSolver will calculate the correct result and then and only then flatten the data so that you get the correct uh, final class for each line item. So if I click Save, um, we'll see that that field got added to my schema. And if I preview this now, we'll see the final class per line item uh, listed within these fields. Another thing we might notice is that some of these fields are missing. So the store name and store country are missing. And that is because not all of our orders are placed within our physical store. So some of these orders are coming from a web order. And we can see that under the sale info source field. 
So to fix that, we can filter out uh, the data so that we only have store orders being sent to Athena. To do that, um, we can add the filter within the UI, but I'm going to quickly switch to the SQL mode and show you that everything we've been doing so far within the, within the UI clicking buttons, we can do in SQL directly as well. So we can see the calculation that we've done above with the multiply being added to SQL. And then we can also um, add a where filter. So in our case, we want to filter where the sale info.source equals. And you'll notice that there's autocomplete that pops up that actually um, contains the values of the field um, because of that metadata that we were collecting during the data source uh, ingestion stage. So in this case, we want any order that comes from physical store. So we'll select that and we'll click on the preview. And now that now we notice that none of the null values are there anymore. So all of our data is full and we're happy with this. So the next stage would be to deploy this. Um, deploying an ups output in Upsell that is pretty simple. Um, you click the run button. And in this case, it's an Athena output. So it's going to ask us where we want to store the data. My bad. Okay. Where we want to store the data. So I'll pick the bucket that I want to store the data in. And then I'll pick the database in Athena that I want to use. And and then the name of the table that I want to use. Once I click next, um, it's going to ask me how much of the data do I want to process. So since this is a data lake, we might have a large history of data sitting in the lake um, and we might want to process the entire history, but we also might want to start from only a few weeks ago or a few days ago. So uh, the default is to use the data source beginning, ending at never meaning it will process the entire history of the data and also when new data arrives it will append that automatically to the table so it's a streaming output and whenever new data arrives you'll have the new data in Athena within a minute a minute's latency typically so once we're happy with that we'll click the deploy button and it's going to automatically create the table in in Athena for us and start processing the data so if I switch over to Athena now, I'll be able to uh, refresh the data, the, the table list, and I'll see that I have a new table named order stats. And then I'll preview this table. At the moment, it probably won't have any data yet, but we'll, we'll wait a couple of minutes and I'll uh, run the square again and I'll show you that we have data coming in. So it's been about one minute, and uh, now if I execute this query, we'll see that we have data coming into ups to the table. Um, as we defined, we have the, the fields that we defined within the output, as well as this calculated value of the final class. We're able to pass this on to our data scientists, and they're able to use this table, and they will always have um, the freshest data available within this table. That concludes my short demo of um, getting all the data that contains uh, arrays within it and flattening that data and sending it out to Athena. I hope you enjoyed the, the demo and feel free to try out AppSolver.